And with more on Canada's position on a ceasefire, we are joined live by the Canadian ambassador to the United Nations, Bob Ray. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Mr. Ray, on this. We appreciate your time. Uh, obviously, I'm sure you're aware there, there's a lot of uh, sharp criticism towards Canada's vote uh, yesterday down at the UN, especially uh, given the fact that just hours before Canada put out a statement condemning Hamas, and, and they made it very clearly that uh, this, uh, when it comes to a ceasefire, this can't be one-sided. Uh, yet a couple hours later, you vote yes on a resolution uh, that, number one, didn't even name Hamas. Uh, and also, furthermore, didn't call for um, uh, condemn Hamas, and it didn't ask uh, Hamas to lay down its arms and surrender. Uh, what's your reaction to, to that criticism uh, in that many people feel that uh, the government was a little bit duplicitous here? Well, not in the least. I, I can't, frankly, I, don't, I really don't see any, any, any sunlight between the statement by the three prime ministers from Australia, New Zealand, and Canada, and the statement that I gave a uh, just a few couple of hours later, um, obviously, was I was fully aware of the of the drafting of that statement uh, that was that condemned Hamas. I condemned Hamas in my speech. It's very it's deeply regrettable that the the General Assembly has still not. Um, it has a majority of delegates have have indicated a willingness to condemn Hamas, but we can't get the necessary two thirds. We will get that. Uh, we will keep trying to get that, and we will get that. Um, but the situation here is, Jamie, that you really haven't, I don't think, given enough focus on is what is the humanitarian situation in Gaza? And how can we possibly ignore the fact that you've got uh, so many people that are homeless, so many people that are struggling, so many people that have died? Um, and you can't just factor that out and say, well, that's, you know, that's what happens in a war. You've got to understand there, there, are, there are rules and limits as to what kind of risks and dangers one can inflict on civilians in a, in a, in a conflict like this. We, the rules of war apply in every conflict. There are no, no exceptions. And, and this is something that we've, we've expressed concern about before. And we've expressed concern about getting people out of Gaza, getting the hostages out uh, of, of where they are, uh, and the need for there to be a humanitarian ceasefire that will allow us to deal with the humanitarian situation, which includes the hostages. Mm -hmm. We don't disagree with uh, the statements that have been made about uh, the kind of uh, organization that Hamas is. We know what Hamas is. Uh, but the situation that we we're voting on yesterday was what do we do to deal with the humanitarian crisis, which is clearly something the United Nations feels needs to be addressed. And that's what this resolution is all about. That's well, all it says. Well, some of the criticism is that, you know, this resolution is essentially emboldens um, Hamas terrorists. It also gives them time to regroup and also uh, get more funding from other well, regional let me, proxies. Let me, ask you a, let me ask you a question, Jamie. When Israel agreed with Hamas to, to have a, a, a ceasefire that would allow for the hostage exchanges to begin, were they empowering Hamas? Um, it, it, the fact of the matter is, is, is you, 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 if you're going to deal with the humanitarian situation, you have to have safety, you have to have a ceasefire, you have to make sure people are not being killed on the way to pick up bread. Uh, you have to make sure that people are not getting killed on the way to get water in their jugs. I mean, you've got to look at the situation as it really is. The Gaza Strip is a, a, a humanitarian catastrophe. And, and that has to be understood. Can the can any can we sit back and say there's nothing we can do? Sorry, mm -hmm. you know we're really sorry to see that, but there's nothing we're going to do about it. I don't think we can afford to say that. And and, and the notion that the notion that the ceasefire is one-sided is absolutely and utterly false. It's no more one-sided than the ceasefire that Israel itself agreed to when there was the first exchange of hostages. And the part suggestion that somehow this is a departure from the principle that it applies to Hamas as much as it applies to Israel. And it's just false. It's just false and false interpretation of the resolution. And Mr. Ray, part, part of the reason why the uh, previous uh, truce uh, was not extended is because that Hamas didn't hand over the list of names of hostages that they were going to give up, and they also continued to break the ceasefire by firing hundred, hundreds of rockets indiscriminately into civilian territory. And, and part of the reason that there's this humanitarian situation uh, for the Palestinian people 
is because of a, a massive attack that Hamas launched on October 7th. And it appears as though that this resolution isn't taking into consideration or placing any of the, the responsibility of this terrorist organization that has put the people in the situation that they're in, that is firing rockets, and at the same time, they're cowardly hiding in terror tunnels while their people are taking the brunt of this uh, of this military operation. Um, and furthermore, Mr. Ray, I, I do want to ask, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've been responding to this uh, about the uh, the off the cuff remark that was made uh, after your your speech earlier today. And we just want to play that clip very quickly for our viewers. I thank the distinguished representative of Canada. I now give a floor to distinguished representative of Iceland. See how that flies. Mr. Ray, Mr. Ray, I'm just wondering if you can just kind of clarify the context of that comment. Was that basically, uh, you know, re regarding the speech that it, it, your position differed from what the, uh, the prime minister essentially had uh, in the statement that was put together by, by the federal government or just not provide a, some not clarity? Not in the least. No, not, not at all. It was a comment I didn't, I mean, first of all, obviously it didn't. I believe my speech was over and the floor had been given to another delegate. So I was talking to two of my colleagues who um, who had been working with me on the speech. And obviously the speech was something we all carefully considered. We worked with Ottawa on, we worked with, with drafting back and forth. And I, I, as I always do, added a few comments into the speech uh, and just making sure that everybody knew that uh, what we were saying was what we were saying. Um, I, I wouldn't read anything into it more than more than that. I mean, it's not a, not a not a big deal. I know some people will want to make it a big deal, but from my perspective, it's not a big deal at all. Uh, I'm wondering, Mr. Ray, what message do you think uh, some of our allies, like the United States, uh, like Germany, like the United Kingdom, who uh, Canada, you know, historically votes alongside with, including Israel, um, that you decided that this time around on this resolution that Canada deviated from that long-standing history of voting alongside uh, their allies, but instead voted alongside with, you know, many other nations, um, many other Asian nations, Arab nations, but also with the likes of Russia, Iran, um, North Korea. What, what, do you, what message do you think that sends to, to some of our allies? Or are you concerned well, about that? Well, I think that? if you look at the vote, I think if you look carefully at the votes, I mean, you'll see that 22 countries that were with us in abstaining on the last resolution voted in favor of this resolution. Um, many, many European countries, uh, France, uh, Ukraine, go down the list of the Scandinavian countries. Many countries voted with us on this vote. I mean, in any vote at the UN, you're going to get all the countries that you mentioned. They're members of the United Nations. So, yeah, they're, you're going to, if you vote that way, you're going to get those countries voting in the same way. We've talked about this issue with our allies very, very closely and very carefully. I can assure you that Everyone understands the, the difficulty and the challenges of any decision that we make. I, I can tell you that the, the pe people that I've talked to here are very respectful of Canada's position. They understand it. Um, and I think it, it is a reflection of Canada's longstanding commitment to the principles that humanitarian issues have to be taken seriously and can't simply be ignored. Um, and that's a position that Canada has taken over many, many years in a great many disputes. And in order for us to be consistent in how we apply our approach in these areas, we, we have to continue to, to, uh, to take us down that uh, direction that respects the rights of all parties mm -hmm. and that also, frankly, builds on processes that um, Israel and the United States have been heavily involved in, in terms of negotiating on the conditions under which ceasefires and the exchange of, of, uh, of, of, of prisoners and hostages would take place. So I, I, I think it's important for us to, to put that in perspective as we understand the positions that we've taken. I think a, a lot of people can appreciate the complexities of um, wanting to deal with the humanitarian crisis and at the same time um, respect Israel's right to defend itself. Uh, Canada's ambassador to the United Nations, uh, Bob Ray, we always appreciate your time and perspective. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks very much, Jamie.